hang tight. And we have one last homework, homework nine. Okay, and the plan is I'm gonna let you drop one of the lower score for your homework. So basically you're gonna increase your homework overall point, which is a lot give you 30%, right? And what about quiz? What about research paper? So research paper and quiz is about 15%, right? So I'm thinking to give you five, I mean, break it down 5% for quiz category and 10% for research paper. Would that be fair since you are working really hard on your research paper or should we get 10% quiz and 5% research paper? What do we think? Uh, research paper. Wait more on research paper? Wait more is better. Yeah, research paper, 10%. 10% research paper? I'd also prefer the heavier weight for the research paper. So I guess 10% should be uh, a more democratic uh, response. Okay. So 10% research paper and 5% quiz category. Then midterm, you already figured out that we had 20, I think 20 to 10, right? So now what we have left is the final exam. 25%, is that correct? So, no makeup final exam. Okay, so make sure that you'll be here, not here, but like here in your dorm where you feel so quiet so that you can remain someplace quiet just that you can concentrate on your final exam. And uh, we go from there. So basically, you, we don't have to show up on in class, right? We would do. The final exam similar to what we did for the midterm. Okay, so if you feel you, I mean, if you in, if you in interested, you can be here. But I mean, it's not a requirement. Okay, so here's the thing, though. I want to make sure that you all will adhere to the university academic uh, uh, honesty for policy, right? So meaning that if you notice something going wrong, let's say you work hard, a subgroup of friend decided to work on together on the, the, the final exam, right? If that happened, if you let me know, email me, I'll give you point. And I'll take point off for those who engage into or violating the university academic uh, dishonesty policy. What if somebody lies now? That that's said wants more points, and now he's gonna say I cheated and I didn't cheat. Well, the thing is, my my point is that I want you to work on your own. My point is I wanted to reflect what you learned from this semester. Okay. My point is not to be a police watching you and trying to come up with different strategies to take your point off. Okay. My point is we need to do our own work. Okay. And Again, try not to engage into that kind of activities because only do it one and you get caught, it will ruin your reputation, right? You pay a lot of money in tuition for, for your degree. You don't want to that to, because of the pressure or whatever reason, right? You want to engage in that activity, that will be bad, okay? Trying to avoid and get into that activity, okay? And uh, we go from there. Okay. Any question? Any suggestion? Okay. Let me go ahead and share my slides. If we. Uh, that is fine with the, with the slide of truth that we are in right now. Oh. 
There you go. It's working. All right, so what did we talk last lecture? Talked about push down automata. Awesome. Push down automata. Why do we need push down automata? For context free grammar. For context free grammar. Okay. Why do I, why are we interested in context free grammar? I guess context free languages in general. It's more interesting. Right? So if we recall from regular languages, we look at some of the subset and they're, they're, they're interesting by itself. But then if you want to incorporate some kind of memory devices that can store the, 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 the processing string in the language, right? We know that we could do more elaborate, sophisticated storing mechanism using context-free grammar through the context-free. Um, um, basically, we are we are considering the family of context-free languages, and with that uh, family, we know that we could represent them using context-free grammars or post automata, right? And we know that. We know that for any context-free language, there exists an NPDA, a non-deterministic pushdown automaton, right? And the definition of the machine is basically similar to the DFA or NFA, except we have additional feature, a feature such that we're going to rely on a stack and a different input alphabet set, right? So, so we're looking at this example, right? So then we have this context-free grammar, G. And we have the production, S2, A, S, B, B, or S2, A, okay? The question is, how do we construct a push-down automata for this grammar. Okay, so if you recall from earlier lecture, there was a very brief recipe how we can do that. Okay, so here I'm going to quickly record that recipe through the example. Okay, before we could convert that grammar G to MPDA, we need to make sure that they are in the Way back normal form, right? And the reason we want to convert this the grammar to this form because it's gonna give us a lot of convenient way to describe the tradition, not only for the tradition graph but also for the tradition from the stack uh, system. Okay. So now we have first have to recognize that whether it will be in the the normal form or not, and if not, we need to convert them. Okay, the inherited properties of the normal form here is that there's no lambda production, right? And um, there's some other property, for example, basically, you're going to have another U less production also, right? And all the characteristics that if you're using Grayback or Chomsky code. Chomsky normal form that you're gonna also get different properties. But for this particular example, we're gonna convert first convert the grammar into the gray back normal form. Okay. So now after we convert it to this form, we get that grammar. Right? Any question to that point? How do we go from the two production to the four production? Uh, no, I'm not. So you put 
compromise the instructions to that one by replacing the DB with with a new one to do production A, which goes to B capital B, which then capital B just goes to A. Exactly. Right? Again, with the variable A and B. You can use X, Y, and Z. This doesn't matter. It's just a label. Right? And here I'm using A, B so that is consistent with all earlier examples that we looking at earlier. Okay? So now, when we get this form, we are ready to construct the NPDA. Okay? So first, we have to think about how we're going to trigger the grammar into like basically put processing the, the initial uh, transition and also processing the final transition. Okay, so it's pretty common for any any of the following grammar that, that the first step and the last step is similar. Okay, the, the middle component, then we're going to start using all the production one, two, three, four. Okay. So first, how do we push the S simple to the spec? Right? So here, we start with the S simple. We're going to start with this guy first. Okay, first part of the Okay? Now we're going to have, because of the, uh, this is the automaton, right? So we need to have some initial state. Here we're going to be using Q0. Okay? And then when you're processing lambda, basically any string, the left mode would be any lambda, number of lambda, right? So you have some lambda, let's say you have this string, A, B, A, B, right? So this is the lambda, this is also a lambda, right? So now first, before we even processing this whole, this string, we now first need to push, using this trick here, to push the stack, uh, put the S, the variable, into the stack. Okay? So here's the lemma for this string. Okay? And Z here is the what? Stack symbol. It's a, it's a starting stack symbol. Right? So now after you transition to the next state, Q1, let's say we are going to Q1. Now we're going to replace what? We're going to push or replacing Z with SZ. Okay. So this is the very first step you need to do after you convert your grammar into the normal form. Any questions? So this is a, this is a very standard trick. So now we're going to do the the last trick after we're processing all the production rule here. Okay? So now after we push S into the stack, what do we do? Well, we start, we're going to start processing all the production rule that we have in the grammar for the normal form. Okay? So first, we're going to, because we already at Q1. Okay? So now we're processing A. Why are we processing A, not B? Because uh, that's the only thing that's accepted by S. I knew B because B doesn't be accepted by S. Okay. Any other observation while we're processing A here? Because S only accepts the terminal variable A. Exactly. The nature of the gray back normal form is that you always have a non-terminal. You always have the terminal simple at the beginning of the production rule. Always. Right? So that's the beauty of this normal form. So now we are processing A. And here we are also processing A. Okay? So this first guy here is going to be processing S to A, S, A. Right? So now we're processing A, the terminal simple, and we, if we encounter S, which is this guy, 
Oh, actually, S here is, is the guy from the public bank, right? What do we do? We're going to stay in Q1. Okay, we are staying in Q1. And now we're going to change the stack content to from S to SA. Which is, which are the two variables from that production. Okay. Question? So now the next thing is that we also have to also do the transition for the next production group for S, right? So S now transition to A, right? So now here, the left hand side is the same. The only difference here is that now you have to change the transition to Q2 and then uh, on like lambda on the stack, right? Well, with this machine, you're always in Q1. Uh, okay, so when you're processing all the production rules in this normal form, you're always in Q1. You only transition to Q2 when you, missing Q2 here is the final state. Okay, you only transition to Q2 when you want to transition to the final state. Okay, which I'm going to show you later on. Okay, so now here is where you're processing S to A, I mean production S to A, you basically go changing the, the, the stack content from S to lambda, meaning that you're removing S. All right? So now look at these two production. Okay, using the same trick that I showed you here. Convince yourself that these two traditions are correct. So how do we construct this transition? How do we convert this back to the production rule? Could you please repeat the question? So on the, this transition here, using the same trick that we did earlier in this, in, in this guy, how do we convert this back into the production rules? Isn't it that this is the, the left hand side A? And that is B. Okay. Would you be able to move the camera and show us the board a little more?
Yeah, that's better. Okay, so we have this point, D2, and this point, right? D2, transition. Oh, going too fast, a lot of distraction. Okay. It's fine. Okay, so now focusing on this, this, this transition. All right, so basically, this transition is a result from this production. All right. And the same thing here, this transition results result from what production? The third production, and the fourth production. Okay. So how can we figure out all these? Basically, based on the recipe that I showed in the earlier slide from lecture 23 before the lecture 24, right? So this is, here's the exact step by step procedure, how we implement that procedure. Okay. And if you're not convinced, let's see. Open up which chapter chapter is this? This is chapter seven, right? So now you go and open to page 193. Okay. So they have the recipe there. Okay, same thing. Okay, now you convinced that these four traditions resulting from the four production rules from the normal form. Okay. So now the last step is to make another transition from Q1 to the final state Q2. Okay, how do we do that? Well, here's another trick. So now you're gonna add Q1 and now you're gonna processing any input, none. Right, you're going to process in this left lambda. You're going to process in this guy. So this is for the when you pull, push F into the stack. Okay, now here we transition Q1 to Q2. Okay, so how do we do that? We have Q1, doesn't matter where exactly the, the, the transition all the stack content at this point, because we know that we only make this transition to the final state. Okay, so now we're processing lambda. We know that the stack now only have the story simple. Okay, now we transition to Q2, and then the stack just remain the same. Okay, and this is where we the transition, and this is okay. So before the from this, from Q1, Q0 to Q1, okay? And when we're in Q1, you're gonna process in all the grammar, all, the, all P in grammar, all the production, P in G, right? And then if you have 10 production rules, you're gonna have 10 conditions, right? And then the last step is basically just convenient condition from, from Q1 to Q5, okay? And this is the complete solution for this machine, for this grammar, right? And from this, you could also create a transition graph, okay? So the, how, how do we draw a transition, a transition graph using this transition function? Okay. 
got Q0, the initial state. Q0 transitions into Q1 with length of the length of 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 length Online class, any questions? Be clear. If it's not clear, you're going to struggle in the final exam. Okay, so a chance to ask questions. Okay, now, now what? Well, then you will loop, loop back to the one with, with the productions A. A S S A or A S lim or A S uh, lambda. So let's do let's do one at a time. Let's do one at a time. What is the first transition if you want? First transition if you want is is um that you're adding on A and okay, then you processing A. Yeah, and then you're oh it's uh, S A. So that's correct. So you're processing A. Processing A and then you're processing the stack simple. S of stack with S A. Okay, so replace N with S A. Right. All right, next. Seven. How do we do the next condition? So we just one here. And lost the screen. Okay. Here, this guy, you cross this guy. Done. Now, yeah. So what is the what is the simple that we have done? No, no, A. Well, we need to process it this guy. Oh. So this, this. Very good. Okay. For the online class, how do we make the next transition? How do I can use it? So Sam, how do we make the next transition? So we're done with this guy, this guy, that we're processing this guy. Any full sense not there? Chima. I'm I'm here, but I'm not I'm not sure how to Okay, where 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 what is your question if you're not sure? I'm not sure how how to do how to do it. Uh, how do you get the, the, the next uh, transition? Okay. How can I help you to fix that? So I need to create an edge label for this tradition. All right, basically that's what we did here. This is the this is the very first addition here, and these two uh, these two. Okay, now I want to make the next one. Okay, Chris. Um, I can do the next transition, but um, one last question. You want to ask? Uh, yeah. What is the purpose? Of, so the only purpose of doing the lambda transition to the only state that you want to do itself with lambda. Get rid of some of the stack to, to keep track of the you know, the content of the stack and at the same time process the, the separate string for this language. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you. And um, the next transition is uh, Q1 to itself with B. B. Um, uppercase A. A. Uh, uh, uppercase. Okay. 
Any questions? The next next tradition. Nick. How do I do the last one? Go on Q1. The last tradition is go from processing the character locally. Maybe we place it in lambda. Very good. Okay. So now we're done with all the production rules using all the transition functions. Okay. Now we, ne we need to make the last transition to the final state. Okay. Step. How do we make the last transition to the final state? You want to? Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, it's, um, Q2. Q2? And that was the. Not Q and label for this guy. Right? What is the edge label? But for these, so basically we have four labels for this edge. Right? And then how do we label that edge? And the Z. Okay. Any questions? So yeah. that what the last steps in the list? So like, can you end it with like any steps? You could. Okay. But this is the basic, this is basically we should be following the recipe from the book. Okay. Right? So here you, you can see that if I give you in the final exam, I give you a grammar. I, could, I mean, it could be nice to say, oh, this is already in a way back normal form. I say, oh, I want to test whether you know how to recognize the, in the Chomsky or way back. We'll give you some other grammar ground, ground without the normal form. And that's you to do that. We can do the, the substitution rule to remove all the lambda production. So I can create a lot of interesting questions here. Okay. But the idea here is that I give you a grammar. And I ask you to construct this one or show me the tradition. On this NPDA, you can you can do that. Um, how, when you say you need to remove the lambda uh, production, do you mean to remove it from this? No, no, no. no, no. Um, you um, mean to come uh, from the grammar before you convert it into the lambda production? What condition? What is the precondition before we can build the uh, control the NPDA here? Um, put it into. Exactly. First thing before you do any NPDA construction, right? You need to make sure that that grammar is, is, is in the normal form. Yeah. Okay. Don't do anything else before you confirming that is valid. Otherwise, you're going to not be able to construct this NPDA. Yeah. Okay. Question? Nick? Well, not all. Okay, very good. We're gonna explore the limitation of the context free languages languages the next chapter. Okay. So at this point, when I'm asked you to construct the NPDA, you can safely assume that I give you context free grammar that you could construct the NPDA. All right. And perhaps for the two two hour next year, I mean like the, the next level class, I'm gonna give you just any grammar. And your job is determined whether it's regular languages or complex free languages. Right? Or whether it's not complex free languages. And then you're gonna be able to determine whether you can control the NPD or not. Okay, which we're gonna explore in the next chapter and in the subsequent slide. Okay, but for now, here's an example how you convert. Context free grammar into the NPDA device. Okay. Question. Is it clear? Do you think you can do this on the, in the final exam? Obviously not. Yes. You are, I'm, I'm confident. Um, uh, so, um, and it's Assume that every context free grammar you're able to get that normal form. That's like the first thing. So, 
Yes, just the any other three. But for this class, it's safe for you to assume that if you have the gray back normal form, you can fit over into the end. Okay. But if you go out this class and some other professor saying that how you know that this is context free grammar, how, how, how can you tell? All right, so then that we're going to explore that in a couple of slides later. Okay, another, maybe another example is how do you know that if the language is regular? How do you show that if this language is regular or not? For that, you can like something exactly. So now, with, this, with that same thought process, how do you show that if a contact free grammar is, uh, is, is not contact free grammar language? You're going to use the same thing, you're going to explore the something lemma again. Okay, so but we're not there yet. Let's let's make sure that we all understand this concept. Okay, so one more thing. All right, so now we know how to convert to the NPDA. We know how to draw this beautiful picture. So now we also have a notion of the instantaneous description. All right, so meaning that when I give you the string A, A, B, B, can you show a partial tray using this NPD machine? How do you show that whether this string would be accepted by this NPDA? You can make an instantaneous transition for it. Very good. So now, what, what is the first thing we should write here? So Q0 A A B B okay. and Z. Okay. Now it's simple here. All right. Left dash. Q1 A A. Right. Common. Nick. Oh, very good. Keep A there. So basically, you are processing, right? You count. You are counting A and B for the string. So you get rid of the A, now you only have A, B, B. Okay. B, B. S, A, Z, Z. 
question. Uh, it's um, it's just Q1, uh, and then it's B B A B, right? Well, it's actually just A Z. So this one's the like it's the last A, so you want to get rid of the S because you don't need the S anymore. Oh wait, it's yes, yeah, so there's not another A that's the roster. So how are you go from here to here? <clears throat> Where, where, what, which label uh, from this ad that you can use? This one? Right. So it's A. Yep, you're removing A. Now the stack symbol was S, and you move removing, and then just replace it with lambda, and then you hit A. Okay. All right, so we get here. We have to do how many more conditions to get to the determination whether we're going to accept or reject this group? Two, three, three. Okay, two for BB, and the last one is lambda. Exactly. Okay, any questions? Okay. So, yeah, multiple trick, no multiple thing that can be asked in the exam. All right, grammar. Production construction of NPDA, go on the division graph, show whether the string would be accepted by this NPDA. Okay. All right, so now I'm giving you this grammar. You think that it's within the next five minutes you can show me how to construct a either the transition graph or the NPDA for this one? So right now 11, 11.55 at 12, we have to go about the page.
So how many still need more time? And you want to figure it out? Meaning this question only, for example, only take five minutes? Is that the correct assumption? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. All right, let's see. Should we make this uh, using this this uh, graph to make it quicker, or should we do it uh, step by step? Step by step. Okay. All right. What is the first transition? So from Q zero you cross this lambda is Z, and then you go to Q one, and then it's X. Good. Same thing, right? It's just a very simple trick to push the, the starting symbol from the grammar. The S is the starting symbol into a stack. Okay, now what? Uh, Q1 AS. Q1 A. Q1 A. Is that it? Um, Q1 A capital A transition into Q1 A capital A B C. Q1 A yes and A B C and B C okay. Then also transition to Q1. Q1 followed by lambda. Okay. What else? How many suggestions do we have in that production rule? Uh, Q1, Q, capital A, Q1, A, capital, capital B. Capital B, right? We have three suggestions. I mean, Oh, yes, yes. Right. Yeah, you can process it. Okay, so then we have this one. Okay. So I have two. Now it's the Q1 comma B. Q1 comma B. Comma B. Um, uh, a big A or small A? Big A. Okay. And then I do the uh, Q1 um, Q1 B. What else? Um, for, for Q1 A capital A. Q1, A capital A. You also have a, uh, you also this is a Q1 lambda. No, not Q, yeah, Q1 lambda. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Are we done? No, uh, so it's Q1 location F. And that goes to Q1 lambda. And then Q1 lowercase c capital C is Q1 lambda. Okay. And then Q1 lambda is the Q1 lambda. And then this guy, Q1 lambda z, Q2, Q2, z. Are we done? <clears throat> you have to make a like a random transition to the final state. Yeah, it's what the last one is. He's using the final state.
So can we be using this guy? Yes. Okay, what can we keep? Keep everything except the entry rules. Exactly. All right, keep everything. And then, so now we check, check, all right? On this guy, we go here. Okay. Question. So when we first start doing this, it is in a normal form. Yes. What if they are not in a normal form? Very good. And now we know how to do this. We know how to do this. Uh, we need to know how to do the processing the string that can be accepted like, by process by this machine, right? So, for example, if that string is recognized by this machine, A A A B C. So you start up, you go from Q0 to Q1 with the lambda, right? So you're doing Q1, and you process S, that just removes an A, so you have AA, C, and then you have AA, C. You go, if you process A, you have two options. You have to process the one that's the non terminal, though, because you can't terminate the string there, because then it wouldn't be the string. So then you go to Q1, um, just a, B, C, but then you add another A, then you add big A, B, C, sad. And if you process big A again, that's going to be either you. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, no, that's not mine. Yeah, so it can process the string. Did I say yes? This NPDA will recognize that string. What about the other? <clears throat> I would say yes, because um, the NPDA, you don't even, I don't think you really need to transition to NPDA is you know, representation. Context free grammar. Look at that, it's very helpful. Okay, Nick, you agree? So we have three agreed. 
And in this three. Three A's. So you need to show step by step. If you are asked to show if uh, showing the possible trade for this and three A's. Right? Just simply that, oh, by inspection. Not sufficient. Okay. So after this class, you say, yeah, yeah, my inspection because I already got credit for this class. I need to show. To get credit for this class, you have to show. Okay. Good. Now, <clears throat> so basically, theorem 7.2 is connect all the dots together. Right. So we know that we could go from complex three grammar to NPA, and we can go the other way. Convince me that we can go the other way. Exactly. So do it in reverse. And you're good to go. Okay. Okay, now how do we fill in the, the blank here? Which we gotta do you have a question next? Very good. Exactly. So then how do we update that? We can do reverse, even then we have the same setup here. Right? If we have hand state, then how do we do that? Right? So again, we that will be more complicated system. Okay, for now, if it's fall into this form, then we can just reverse it. Okay. So then when we get to chapter eight, we know that not all contact free ground. Languages can be that can that we can find an NPDA for it, right? So then you're going to find out how exactly that is possible. Okay. So for now, if we go and go using what we learn so from a, from a lab, from contact free languages to NPDA, right? And suppose that on the final exam, I'm giving you this, I ask you to construct NPDA. How do you do it? Reverse the thing. Okay. So now, so we can tie them all, tie them all together in, in these two terms. Okay. So now there's one more NPA that we haven't discussed. All right. Can you guess what that's NPA going to look like? So right now, what is this? This is the non-deterministic, right? The question is, can we even construct the deterministic Push down automaton. Would that be interesting? Um, yeah, yeah, I think. What is the benefit of deterministic? Um, it's, 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 less in, it's less than hatred. It won't just direct paths versus the multiple paths. And why do we need direct, direct path? Parsing. Very good. So, all the computer that you are writing code. You're using some kind of deterministic option. Otherwise, the computer would, if you type in two plus three, you expect it to get five, but it's going to give you ten. Because that is uh, in, in, uh, non deterministic, right? Okay, so now let's look at what exactly is the non deterministic, uh, the deterministic uh, push down automaton. Well, the definition is the same as the deterministic except these three constraints okay so everything is the same except the, the transition function okay what can you say about the transition function or the deterministic you have to add every possible transition so for every if for every accepted string in the input alphabet so every accepted character the input alphabet, you have to have a transition with each input stat character to uh, from each state. Okay. So you have to have the exact mapping. What what is the big picture? What is the high level description for that? So start thinking about the partial function and total function, right? That's one to one. Exactly, that's one to one. And how does it fit to the transition function? You only have one transition function. 
Okay, what's this here? You have Hamilton Newton function two here, right? For deterministic sigma two to the DFA, we only have one condition. Okay, so now. It's uh, just a basically to avoid our what I showed in the previous slide for the definition, right? So there's some restriction on the NPDA. Any configuration may have at most one tradition definition. If the EPDA defines the tradition of a particular state, lambda stack top configuration, there can be no input consuming tradition out of that state with a top of stack. Okay. Another case for the finite automaton, which is the DFA. The lambda tradition does not necessarily mean that the automaton is non -tradition. Okay, now let's look at some examples. So given this, the uh, DPDA, okay. How many states do we have in this PDP? DPDA. Yeah, three. three. What is the simple body stack? So simple zero. 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 And one. And one. Okay. What is the input alphabet simple? What are what are those? A B. A B. Very good. So now, here are the example of the tradition rules. Okay, what does it mean here? Describe to me what exactly went on in the first tradition. You're inputting characters A and then you're adding one to the stack. Okay, what about this, the state? You're Q0. Q0? Q1. Right. So there's three things that you keep in mind. Q0, processing A, adding one to the top of the stack. Same thing here, right? But it's different. So Q1, processing A, what do we do with the stack? Any idea? This guy. Q1, processing A, addition to Q1, what happened to the stack? That one to the stack. Okay, well, this guy. Q1, processing B, addition to Q2, what happened to the stack? Um. Take away one. Take away one. Okay. Same thing. Okay. Any question? Very straightforward. Okay. And you can clearly see that there's only one tradition. Okay. And the same concept we can apply here for the DPDA, right? We can show the possible trade using the instantaneous description. And you can know that that string can be accepted by this. Okay. So now, aha, this machine deterministic puts our automaton can recognize that language. A to the N, B to N. Where have you seen this language before? Non regular languages. Non regular language. Okay. Where, where else did we see? Only example where we construct the, the very first example of the PDA, the, um, the non deterministic puts our automaton. Right. So now, You can say that if we, if we can construct the, the, the deterministic push our automaton, then this language is actually deterministic context free language. Right? So you need to show by the construction that if we could construct the DPDA, then this could be deterministic language, context free language. Right? If we show that we could create the Non-deterministic push our automaton, and that language is also a non-deterministic context-free language. So you can see that the same example 
we will was able to construct an NPDA, and then we can construct a DPA. What does this say to you? Yeah, so, and you can convert from an NPA to DPA and vice versa. Okay, so basically, this telling us that this particular language is could be deterministic or could be non deterministic, right? The thing is, can we always find a deterministic for the, uh, the, the, for the NPDA? And the answer is no. Okay, this only work for this case. Can you construct the NPDA for any context free language? For PDA. Okay. So I'm just showing here, right? This example that is work, right? But the thing is, I'm saying later on, I'm going to show you next slide here that they are not the case. Okay. So we've seen earlier that this is the NPDA for that same language. Okay, from the previous slide, I showed that we can also construct the, the deterministic push out automaton for the same language. All right? So, basically, for this example, yes, this language here is the, from the NPDA, we can construct the DPDA. Okay? And then your question is does it mean that we can always build a DPDA for any context free language? The answer is no. Okay. Example. These two. So this is the first one is the example that you saw earlier. This is the example that also the deterministic. Okay. And here's this is one of the very interesting observations which you should keep in mind that deterministic and non-deterministic push down automata are not equivalent. Okay. And then there are some context free languages for which no DPA can be built. It's not the case for regular languages, right? For regular languages, we can go either way. But for context free, some of them are not. Okay. The example here. All right, so this is the example that you showed earlier. This is the polygonic structure. So W, W reverse, right? And here, even though that it meets all the conditions for the deterministic push out automata, but then here is the valid condition too that I show in the definition of the deterministic DA. Okay. So that here we can condition out that state. Okay. So I'm going to stop here. We don't have time. I think we have two minutes left. Right? Next. Class, we're going to talk about properties of context free languages. Then we briefly going to talk a very simple Turing machine machine device. Then we're going to explore about the hierarchy and limitation. Okay, so that is the plan for the rest of this semester. Is that good? All right, awesome. I'll right, see you Wednesday. Thanks, Dr. Boy. Have a nice day. Thank you, Professor. Hey, Professor. Uh, see you later, Professor. Uh, uh, both quizzes CSC 212 and CSC 370 will be on Wednesday this week. I have not announced any quiz yet. You will, you will figure it out. So you got the uh, the Sydney Prize. Yeah, uh, for, for research day. For research day. Uh, that's, that's okay. Bye. Right. Thank you, Professor Boy. Elvis also got a prize. Uh, Are you about the same team? What? Are you Are you about the same team? No, different team. But um, I think it was another computer science. Uh, okay. Right. Send me an email. Remind me that, and then I'll, I'll make sure that it's not going to happen. Yeah, no, it's like uh, Christina, Aaron, and uh, Sarah. Oh, I see. Yeah. Uh, at least offer. Got some pride. <laughs>